Dungeons and Drimbus is rated R for rude language, rough violence, and raunchy humor. I do declare, here's what happened previously on Dungeons and Drimbus. Upon arriving in Opula, the attorneys spend the night at Until Dawn Park. After some morning coffee, they head off toward the Autograph Theater. Thomas and Teronica's head inside and skirt around some identification issues. As Richard and Jessica bump into Tommy Ware Rat. Jessica is hired as assistant director. And after a frightening encounter with Trip, the stage manager goblin, Richard is hired as assistant stage manager. They proceed into the table read with a number of icebreakers until Ryan Crabapple appears, set to understudy Thomas. With tensions rising, the crew continue on through their first rehearsal in preparation to trap Lord Reginald Figglesbottom. I do declare, your honor is back in session. <laughs> After rehearsal, you all step out of the theater. You look for your companions who you just realize have been left outside all day. It is snowy out here. It is cold. You're looking around. You don't see them anywhere. And then you spot them actually having a nice lunch at a cafe nearby. And, you know, it's really funny because I have never shed a day in my life, but my snakes, they shed multiple times a year. It's really funny. uh, Yeah. No, I completely... I actually had a friend once who did shed. It was really weird, really? though. Really? He would, like, cover... Yeah, it, he did, like, a weird thing. He was into some weird shit. I'm not gonna lie. His name was Jerry. He covered himself, like, completely in glue once. And it was oh. just strange because then he eventually was like, Oh, I'm peeling, I'm peeling. I'm like, no shit, you covered yourself in glue. What are you thinking? Well, yes. So it, I mean, it was that's... just... Yeah, exactly. So it wasn't like real shit. I shame. dated a Yuan T once and they shed. However, it wasn't until a couple of months into the relationship that I found out he wasn't a Yuan T at all. He was actually just a little dwarf in a costume. And he still what? was able to Wait. mimic shedding. Yeah, I think he wrapped himself in plastic wrap. Wow, oh, that's very okay, interesting. Okay, so the shedding wasn't, it wasn't real. It was, it, it, it no. was like... You know, admittedly, I am a half Medusa, so I don't know, you know, my mother, I never actually knew her, but I don't know if she shed in daily life, and I just don't because of the human parts of me. Mm. It would be very interesting. It could be, it could be. Wow. Oh, is yeah. it? Ha! And you see uh, from across the street, Kit waves a tentacle at you guys, like through the storefront, as you're stepping out of rehearsal. Oh, hey. Oh, my God. Have you all? They finished already. That was that was quick. Okay. Well, hey, how'd it go? Oh, these three, they did great in the read throughs today. And we got to meet a particular understudy who is who is particular but yeah you know i think it really brought me and thomas a little bit closer together today um and i think i think we're 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 really creating something special oh oh, by the way i got an assistant director position as well that's wonderful yeah i'm really excited about it i'll be able to kind of help guide the production in in my own special way does that technically make richard also your assistant <clears throat> yeah, Richard, speaking how, of how available I, I, I would speaking say we're, we're more on a on a, a on a somewhat even ish playing yes. field but i think richard is still still top dog here yes yes and jessica kind of gives a <laughs> sly wink to Tyronicus. How, how did that go for you richard it went excellently i have acquired a position as i set out to do my plan is in perfect motion uh, speaking richard, of what's your position speaking you of i think I may have a solution to some of our issues. The, um, the state manager has asked me to help find potential hires for costume designers. Wait, wait, I have a question. I have a question. Yes. 
You said the stage manager asked you to do something? Yes, they asked me to help find potential well, hires weird, for I costume thought, designer and props masters. I'm sorry, manager, I can't so hear that, you how, because I'm trying to relay uh, mission that, wait, critical information to you. And you you're talking, and I think it's making it hard for the people for whom this information is made to digest it because it's really important that they hear this because, you know, we have a very specific plan in place that we need to get in place before the show goes up, and we only have limited time. And if you keep talking, they're not going to hear what I have to say. And so what I'm saying <laughs> oh my is gosh. that the stage manager has asked me to help find potential hires for costume designer and props master. That's wild. I lean into Jessica and Viper is just like, oh my God, is Richard an assistant? Shh. Yes, but don't say anything. We, we, we need him to kind of like. Oh, yes, of course. Of course. It's okay. He, <laughs> he definitely got an ego check today, but it was it was a fun it was a fun moment for all yeah, of us. Yeah, roll an insight check. Whoever is interested in looking at Richard. I think everyone, everyone, yeah. just tell everyone. <laughs> um, all right, that's a 13. Not too high, but... 17. I mean, I also rolled a 13, but I mean, like, I was there, so I guess I don't yeah. really know. It's, I don't need to It's roll. not hard to see. Richard <laughs> looks broken. Oh, no. <laughs> but Richard also <laughs> looks deeply, like... Worried, like, like fearful. unsettled. Yes. <laughs> Thomas overhears Viper and Jessica and leans in and says, "Look, whatever you two do, you cannot use the A word." Okay. I understand. This is I a understand. Very difficult time for him. You cannot use the A word. Do you understand? Noted. Okay. Noted. Of course. Of course. <laughs> so as I was saying, um, I need to find potential hires for costume designer and props master. Well, then that works out perfectly. Um, when do you think they might be available for interviews or anything like that? Uh, I believe that uh, we could bring you in perhaps tomorrow during the rehearsal. Perfect. And if it was anything like my interview, uh, it'll be quite easy. I believe um, Trip will be overseeing this. Oh, right. boy. Uh, <laughs> that, that might be a little bit Which more one difficult. is Trip? Best of what? luck. Which one is Trip? Oh, mm-hmm. Trip, Trip is the is, stage Trip is manager. the SM. The SM. Yes. What does SM stand for? I'm very new to this. Oh, you know, so am I. So, oh, you're yes, new to this? So is that why you Anyway, did... Barbara, is I that... was wondering, since we both have interviews tomorrow, I know that you don't you don't always wear clothes, but would you would you well, want to maybe go shopping for some, I, some interviews? I, actually, on that note, um, Barbara, I believe you wanted to be an usher, correct? Uh, sure. Yeah, why not? Asha, Asha. Yes, you yeah. and uh, Miss Valentine. Um, <clears throat> he, like, after the events <laughs> at Hot Apothecary, he oh has not God. been able to make eye contact with Monique. Oh, my God. Um, and he goes, <clears throat> yes, so I believe uh, for the ushers, it's a little bit more difficult um, because the theater does not employ the ushers. They, uh, they contract them from a place called Security. However, I did find an advert earlier today that said they would have an open hiring this Sunday. And he pulls out a poster and lays it on the table of the coffee shop. I see. Um, hmm. would it be easier to just try and get the prop master gig versus the usher Well, gig? the prop master was going to be Kit, remember? Yeah, I wanted oh, to make little yeah. props. That's but right, you could you right. could sorry, do it sorry, instead, Barbara, if you want. No, and no, I could no, get, no, 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 no. Actually, no. I insist. You could do that, and I could be security. I guess, you know, now that I have a monster, uh, I'd probably be scarier for security. Uh, no. Okay, hold on. No, we're gonna, let's unpack this first. Whoa, now. Don't, look, unless you're saying that in just like a general sense and not, like, you know, if you don't. <clears throat> kid, you're not, you're a, not a monster. monster. You're, 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 you're kid. Kid, you're kid. Kid. No matter what part of you may have physically changed, you inside have never. Thanks. You're the same entrepreneur we met all those weeks ago. Yeah. If it makes you feel better, I've only known you to be this for. Uh, do, <laughs> do you think I'm a monster? <laughs> nah, I've seen real monsters. Yes, and, and Kit... That was really ominous. <laughs> Kit, I must say, I met you after the fact, and I've only known you to be a very pleasant, 
wonderful presence. I don't know any kind of monstrous Not thing about you. Not to say that you. there aren't some wonderfully pleasant monsters oh, out there. Of course, no, of, of course. course, of course, I, I'm, of course. I'm, I'm merely saying that that monster is not even in my vocabulary when it comes to describing you, Kit. Kit, I reckon yeah. to guess that you're only a monster in the sheets. My <laughs> goodness. <laughs> well, well, there you I go. I mean, those tentacles are pretty long. <laughs> oh, oh, my oh my god. Uh, not only is Kit turning red, but his tentacles are blushing too, and he's like, oh my god. Oh, I mean, you might have a career. Stop, stop. <laughs> Kit, you, you get to make me ink. Abula uh, would be the place for that. <laughs> You can start an only creature. Okay, 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 wait, wait. So, so back to the topic ahead. So how about instead of the ushering gig, I go ahead and we, we, we shoot for set design. All right, I can meet I can meet with this Tommy guy and be like, hey, where's your set? What's your set look like? Oh, you don't got one? I do. And then it goes from All there. All right, I will uh, uh, present this idea to the creative team tomorrow morning. And then um, we will evaluate all of you. Perfect. Okay. Is that cool. going to leave us too short-handed with only one usher? Sh- should we get Cheerio in on this? I don't see why not. The more voices God has to do, the better. I agree. Very well. I guess tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow. I love you tomorrow. It's only a day away. Right. So on that note, uh, Barbara, I don't know if you wanted to go, you know shopping to get a nice blouse for an interview you know i only have my my corset with all of my throwing knives in it and i'm not so sure that is you know interview attire as it were sure sure yeah we could make a stop i'll go thrifting i'm okay with that that sounds perfect uh well as since i'm an assistant director i i wouldn't mind going shopping okay that's yeah, let's do a quick uh, I little, gotta, quick little I trip. I want to make yeah. sure that I, I have the proper attire. I think a beret would look very nice. Oh, it would look so cute. I mean, yeah, you know, these are... Uh, ooh, I've really... I've run these heels right. I, I could use some new heels. Perfect. Oh, you already know it. Let's do it. Let's do okay. it. Okay, girls, please, each of you, give me an investigation check. Right. Okay. For her investigation, Jessica rolled a 16. That is a 14 for Viper. Bob rolled a 10. All of you... Please tell me what the shopping trip looks like, and I want you to tell me what your haul is at the end of it. However, the haul isn't exactly what you wanted. It's good, like you're happy with it, but it, it's not. It's not the one. It's not the outfit. Mm, sure. Yeah. Sure. Mm. Yeah. Been there. Well, it starts with a slow motion walk down the street. A gentle snow is falling from the sky. We all flip our hair simultaneously, <laughs> and my snakes hiss at me, but it's for the bit. And we're strutting our stuff down the pavement of Opal City. (laughs) We all are window shopping. Jessica kind of points at a window and like goes, Ooh, ah. (laughs) And I can just see the like, the dressing rooms and Mm -hmm. Viper, Barbara, Jessica and Monique all like coming out at the same time and having on like a crazy outfit and us going like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. Or like, yes, yeah, super yeah. hot. Like, yeah. <laughs> Jessica is trying several different berets on in the shop as the other ladies are changing in the dressing rooms. And she's like looking in the mirror and trying to adjust the beret. And like, she's like trying to adjust it and like she pulls a little bit too much on it and her bone crown rips through the fabric. And then she gives herself a thumbs up in the mirror and she just just nods at herself like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> and Viper is looking specifically for a tunic, but the kind of tunic that like goes off the shoulder only to wear a, a strapped corset over it. So like it's still it's stylish, but it's like not too sexy. You know what I mean? But unfortunately, the colors that she finds are like a light, a light tan. So it it's still like it goes together but it isn't like the chocolate brown that looks really good with green you know what i mean mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah bob has been looking for a pair of pants but every single pair of pants doesn't have working pockets Ugh. and there's literally no point in buying pants if the pockets don't work 
All right, well, no we could pockets. look in the men's section if you, you want. You hear that, big pocket? You need working pockets for the ladies. If I don't get fucking pockets, I'm not buying your fucking pants. You're not getting a penny out of me, you hear me? You hear me? Mark my fucking words. You don't, you're, you're, you're never going to make business again. You're going out of business. And yeah. Monique finds a beautiful pair of red heels. However, they look incredible, but... The tip is like two pointed to the point where it's like squishing her toes together uncomfortably. <laughs> but with that, the gals complete their shopping trip. Please subtract 10 gold. We had 10 gold. I had. Um... Uh, uh, Barb, do you need to finance this? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, did Barb end up buying anything? If she couldn't find the pants she wanted? Is it 10 gold each or is it? 10 gold each. Is it Opula, baby? I hate the city. I... I finance uh, Jessica. Sorry, I'll pay you back as soon as my a, 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 uh, assistant director um, salary comes in. No problem. And with that, unless anyone wants to do anything for the rest of the day, you guys finish your shopping trip, you go back to Until Dawn Pond, you have dinner with Gary, and you rest for the night. <laughs> the next day, you head into rehearsal. You all arrive a few minutes early, expanded party in tow, and you see Richard swallow hard as he looks at Trip, who is sitting across the room, sipping very innocently from a water bottle. Here goes nothing, and he goes to approach them. Meanwhile, Thomas, you see Tommy Ware Rat deep in what seems to be a very serious conversation with a woman in blue nurse's scrubs. Hey, little Thomas guy. Hi, Tommy. Oh, oh, sorry. Wait, give me one second. Yeah. And he turns back and he keeps talking to the woman in the nursing outfit. Uh, Jessica points very subtly at Thomas and casts message to say into his head, is that who I think it is? Yes, it is, Jessica. I think so. Um, Jessica's going to like, she's going to go to like the re- those long rehearsal mirrors that are in like a rehearsal room. Mm-hmm. And she's going to look in and just kind of make sure that, like, she has disguised herself pretty well today. Yeah, r- roll a stealth check for me. Fucking hell, these rolls today. An eight. Okay, your disguise is actually looking pretty bad today. You were, like, you got too comfy yesterday, and so today, like, you didn't really reapply your stuff well, so you look a lot like Jessica. I pull out the disguise kit from Viper and I start to do a bit of, like, I'm touching up, like, I'm trying to make it look like I'm touching up my makeup, but also, like, working on making that disguise a bit more convincing. Mm -hmm. Give me a performance. Let's go for the artistry of it. Okay. That's better. That's an 18. Yeah, you touch yourself up and you get the feeling that much better now. As long as you keep your distance from this woman, she wouldn't be able to pick you out from across the room. Okay, Jessica's kind of going to linger elsewhere and wait to go to the director's table then. Okay. Yeah, you wait around, you chat with some of the rest of the production team, and after a few minutes, uh, Thomas, Cynthia walks past you and she says, Hey, little Thomas guy indeed. And nods to you very pleasantly and walks out of the room. Only Tommy can call me little Thomas guy. <laughs> At this point, Richard walks up and he says, <clears throat> uh, Viper, Kit, B, uh, Trip here is very interested in hiring you as our head craftsman for the production. Uh, however, they will need to vet your skills. I have personally assured them that you are the right people for the job. So, please... Let's live up to that expectation, shall we? Of course. Of course. <clears throat> um, uh, Victoria? Yes? I believe um, uh, Tommy would like to have an assistant director's eyes on this process. Oh, of course. Very well. Shall we? You got it. Let's do it. Certainly. Okay. Trip and Richard lead you to the underbelly of the autograph theater, into a large, beautiful workshop. Lining the walls are props and costumed mannequins with knickknacks from countless famous opulent stage shows. Kit marvels at what appears to be a large wearable puppet with a horrifying face. (laughs) In various stations throughout, you see just about every tool imaginable. Viper, you can't help but wonder what your family could accomplish with a workshop of this magnitude. Wow, this is... Beautiful. Yes, the Autograph Theater takes great pride in its facilities. 
Uh, as such, we will need skilled uh, worksmen to operate them and live up to the standard. So, <clears throat> in that vein, uh, and you see Trip whispers in Richard's ear as he sweats a little bit. <clears throat> yes, um, the pocket full of dead fish is a highly anticipated production. As such, we will need skilled craftsmen to bring this literary marvel to life. We're going to start with a classic challenge today. You will have access to anything you need in this workshop to recreate a classic prop and or set piece from an opulent stage show. Viper, you uh, feel free to incorporate costume if you so desire, but do keep in mind that you will have only 30 minutes. Our first challenge, to keep in mind your interests in set, prop, and costume, will be uh, Tweeny Sod. In particular, <laughs> the barber's chair, famous for being the deathbed of Tweeny's victims and housing the mechanism to dispose of them quickly for processing into meat pies. Your 30 minutes start now. So, the three of you have access to anything you could fathom in this workshop to try and build this barber's chair. So, I would like for you guys to discuss your plans together. Are and we working together? Yes. Okay, oh, okay. Uh, discuss your plans together, and then when you take a concrete action, let me know, and we will roll what is appropriate. All right, so um, I don't know if, if you two have seen this production, but actually my father took me when I was a little girl. It was quite funny because he can't see, but he knew I loved musicals, so he took me anyway. Um, Kit really loved the story, not Kit, up Kit. Twigs really like the story. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. So, uh, just an idea off the top of my head. There is a type of fabric that can, you know, it changes color when it comes into contact with the liquid, right? Yeah. And so, for productions such as this, I would probably utilize that, except it turns red when it comes into contact, so that we would just need to incorporate water, and it would have the appearance of blood all over the chair. Gotcha. So I wonder if we made a chair that obviously with a mechanism could recline to, to you know, dump the body where it needs to go. Of if course. we could also incorporate some of that fabric so that if we just had some water, it would appear very bloody. Mm -hmm. So maybe the, the fabric and the upholstery and all of that stuff, maybe that's a job for Viper. Maybe the chair platform is a job for Barbara, and maybe I could make like a knife or something that has the liquid. Yeah, that could be really cool, like a a, a barber's knife that has a um a like two bead. Yes, or something. yes, mm -hmm. that sounds fabulous. That sounds really cool. I, I used to I, I have experience with that. Uh, I used to help rig some of the irrigation for some of the fobs for the beets. I, I think I could get a simple pop going. All right, that's fantastic. Why don't Why don't we get to work then? Okay. Let's do it. We've got 30 minutes, so don't get too ambitious. All right. <laughs> okay. Sure. Barbara, why don't you describe to me what you're going for with the actual mechanism proper? Obviously, when I think of tweeny sod... Uh, I think of Sweeney Todd, and I want this iconic barber's chair, but since I only have 30 minutes, I obviously can't really do that. So, because just to offset, like, the blood color, I want the chair to not be red. I would want the chair to be upholstered in, like, a different color, maybe, like... Maybe even a green, maybe even a green, which is different, but I like it because with the blood, you'd be able to see it a little better than like with black or something like that. And I don't want to do white because that's too much. And then people would start to get an understanding for maybe what's going on. You don't want to actually see the blood. I'm just going to probably keep it to wood for now since it's it is what it is. But I fully want the chair to be able to recline all the way back to the point where the body would be able to slide off backwards. You can pull it back once and it'll just recline you and then you pull it back again and it fully tips you backwards and you fully go back. Okay. Cool. So with just one lever, this doesn't seem like it's a hard mechanism. It seems like the hardest part about your job is going to be building this entire thing quickly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so why don't you give me, and I will let you pick what you want to use here. You can use sleight of hand. You can use maybe performance if you want to argue for the artistry of it. Those are the two options that come to mind. If you have an argument for a different skill you want to use, I'm, I'm open to hearing it. Mm, 
I'll use sleight of hand. Give me a roll. This is probably the most difficult component of them all. Yay. Thank you for that. That's great. That is a 21. Marvelous. So okay. you take that. Thank you, B. Viper. Yes. I believe you are in charge of the dying and the upholstery. Yes. Right. So um, first, what I'm looking to do is create a barber's cape that would be draped over a person on top of the chair. And I am looking for a either a gray or a tan in the kind of fabric that will change color when it comes into contact with water. And once I do that, then I'll also make a white, like, uh, you know, they put the they put the white paper sometimes mm-hmm. so that it doesn't... The toilet paper, yeah. Yes, yes. So uh, that, and then the cape itself. If I have extra time, then adding some gothic curtains, which doesn't take a whole lot of stitch work, just to, like, you know, make it feel like more of a complete set... If I have time after making the cape and making sure that when it gets wet, it will appear like blood. Great. I'm open again to hearing arguments for different skill uses. You, because you you have so many different components, you are going to have different levels of success. We can, can do I it. make two different checks? One for the stitching itself and then one okay. for the dye. Yes, I will allow that. All right. So that is a 23 for stitch work. Okay, you're using sleight of hand for that one? Yes. Okay. And then, oh, shit, fuck, on a fire. Uh, that is a zero. Okay. Meanwhile, Kit is going to be working on his knife with a pump system. So you see what he starts trying to make is he makes this kind of foldable barber's knife. However, the edge itself, I mean, the whole thing is uh, is lined in rubber so as to not actually hurt anyone. But the edge itself is actually not, um, not an edge, but hollow. And inside of it is a tubing that is meant to run up someone's sleeve to a pump that you can squeeze and have it pump out liquid. Okay. So, demonstration comes around, and you all have done your best. Barb, you do an incredible job putting together this chair so quickly. Thank you. It is impressive. If you were to come and bring a magnifying glass to it, you know, you could find, like, some of the rough seams and all of that looking at it closely, but especially within 30 minutes, like, you could put this on stage, and in good lighting, it would look stage-ready. Viper, you actually do a beautiful job with all of the stitch work. You upholster the chair, you prepare the barber's cloak, everything's ready, and you have dyed it, and we will see how the dye works. And Kit has done a decent job of preparing the razor. It's a little hard to operate. It doesn't quite have that flick that you would want uh, as smoothly. You kind of have to use both hands to open it. And the mechanism seems a little clunky, but you guys are ready to present it. How would you guys like to present it to the judges, for lack of a better word? Yeah, I think we should, can can we have a volunteer? to Yeah, let's do that. Um, I will volunteer to do it. Excellent. Um, who would like to volunteer to be my assistant? Oh, you want to do it? Yes, I I want, you know, like like he does in the show. I I want to do the... Well, I I think we need more so someone to actually uh, be in the chair so that we can show how how everything works. Alright, fine. And Richard sits in the chair and (laughs) waits for Viper to put the cloak on him. Alright. Thank you. I put the cloak on, like, theatrically, mm-hmm. like like I would, were I a uh, teeny, tweeny sod. I almost said teeny swad. Were I tweeny... No, that's that's the little swole barber. Okay. <laughs> no. Were I tweeny sod, I, I would do it exactly like that, and I tie it up, and I dramatically hold yeah, up... Yeah, Richard gets a little nervous. It's starting to feel a little real. <laughs> I, like, ho- dramatically hold up the, the knife mechanism that Kit put together and I like uh, go behind Richard and for the demonstration I use like my hand but I kind of do it in a way where it's like I'm holding Richard's throat to like steady if I were like shaving him but really like the knife only makes contact with my hand so it doesn't like scare Richard. Okay. You do so, and you see the liquid begin to pour out from the seam along the blade. 
and the water makes contact with the cloak. But not only does it not turn red, it actually doesn't turn any color at all. Um, Jessica sees this happen and she's going to cast very surreptitiously, prestidigitation. You make a color, a small mark, or a symbol appear on an object or a surface for one hour. So as she sees nothing's really happening for a split second, so she quickly casts prestidigitation to make the desired color appear. Very well. Yeah, once Viper sees that it turns red, she like... <sighs> yeah, you see it is like a delayed reaction, like those little toy cars that change color with temperature. It's like you see it get wet first and then like half a second later, the color change takes effect as the red pours down and Richard goes, oh, my God, my God. And then Barb pulls the lever and Richard goes sliding backwards. Bye bye. Ow. Oh, and he tumbles out of it awkwardly. Very good. And he holds up the cloak. He goes, wow. Okay. He heads off. Uh, you see Trip is beckoning him to like whisper in his ear and you hear. And Richard says, there was uh, a slight delayed reaction, but considering the time limit, uh, very admirable work, applicants. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, for our next challenge, we'll be taking on something a little smaller and more specific to the show. All right. I would like to invite our assistant director to introduce this crucial prop for the pocket full of dead fish. Oh, hi. That's me. Um, I'm here to introduce this very crucial prop. Yes, this very important element to the stage show that we are putting on. This tale of the murder of Berg Adel in the pocket full of a dead fish. Yes, so uh, I need all of you uh, to work together to please create a hex box chest dice set, please. No! <laughs> <laughs> is that not is that not what you were trying to yeah. get me to do? Hello, this is the inside joke investigator. <laughs> If any of you have skipped over our halftime zones, you need to go back and listen, because they are now canon. As in one advertisement for Elderwood Academy, we visited the moment in which Jessica murders Adelbert Katowski. She does so with a mini hex chest dice box from the Elderwood Academy, by locking a die in his throat until he suffocates and throwing him overboard. Nice. So I will require you all to make the mini hex chest dice box, which is the murder weapon for uh, this wonderful little uh, play that we're putting on and not an actual murder weapon that happened in our real lives. <laughs> Understood. Perfect. A very odd clarification, but all right. You will have 30 minutes to work together on this crucial item to the show. Begin. All right. I think it should be a little bigger than Minnie because it's on the stage, so, um... I agree. The structure itself might be, like, your wheelhouse. Sure, okay, I could yeah, probably right? work on the dice because I have all these tentacles so I could, like, polish them all at the same time. That sounds perfect, and I think that I can, uh, I can do the design on the okay. top Oh, yeah, do you want to uh, add, like, a little, a little, like, a, little a felt lining on the inside or something Ooh. to make it really luxurious? I would love to, yes, a very, we could even do a velvet Ooh, lining yes, on the nice. inside. That oh, could be that's very nice. pretty. What color do you want the box? You want it to be, like, just, like, black, and then the inside is, like, the red velvet? Or? I think it's got to be like Obidus, right? Because it's the murder weapon. Right. Yeah. Or should it be like inconspicuous and you see it throughout the I whole show? I do like inconspicuous. Oh, I think it I is like quite too. common to what have... If, what if it's inconspicuous on the outside and then like when you open it, it's sinister? Yeah. yeah. I like that. So why don't we do like a, a natural uh, brown chest color that, that a lot of chests have, but then on the inside, the velvet now, is red. Does that feel like it fits Julia's character? Because I could even see, like, if we want to get really fancy, we could make, like, maybe, like, an ivory or, like, something. I do like oh. that a lot. Wow. All right. We'll do ivory with a little carving on the top of it, perhaps an insane. These are, this is ethically sourced fantasy ivory. Of course. Um, from, it's far-grown ivory. Yeah, yes. no, yes, that yes, would, yes, yes, that we would have no, it no, no other no. way. No other way. But then the inside, I could do a red velvet. Yeah. yeah. I like it. 
All right. Okay, what design are you going to put on it? I'm thinking mm, the top of it, I'll create clouds, like little swirls, so I don't have to do like too much woodwork on the top. And then I'll do like a half circle for the setting sun, and then a straight line for the sea line, and then、uh, some pebbles for the shore. Beautiful. All right, let's start with Barb again. Tell me what skill you think is appropriate and give me a roll as you try to craft the housing of this mini hex chest dice box. I could see this being a sleight of hand. I was going to say, is it okay if I use sleight of hand again? Yeah, give me another sleight of hand for it. Hell yeah. Oh, that's a natural 20. That's a natural、Woo! 20. Natural 20. Natural 20. Uh, uh, uh. Plus six, so 26. Beautiful. Describe, I guess, the carving and the creation of this box for the listeners at home who might not know what a mini hex chest dice box looks like. Yeah, so it's ideally it's supposed to be a little mini version of this little box that will hold all of your die, and it is a hexagon. It's in hex shape. But this one's going to be slightly bigger because you're on stage and we want to make sure everyone can see it, even those in the top tier and the mezzanine and such. Barb's hands are on fire, but she's working so hard on this as she's carving out and, 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 and really like shaving it down so all the edges are smooth. And they're just like all perfectly measured and they're all exact. And it's just so nice. It's like you, you can like rub it on your, by the time she's done, you can rub it like on your face and there's no, it's, it's been like sanded down. It's really, really smooth and it just feels really nice、yeah. in the hands. It's very deceiving. It's not something you would expect to kill someone with. It is nice. It is smooth as marble. It is sleek. You inlay a magnet on each of the lids so that it snaps shut into place and pops open nice and easy.、Uh, you You do a, a pretty phenomenal job.、Uh, this, like, it, should the show take off, this is one of those items that would auction for like an absurd amount of money. Nice. Viper, why don't you walk us through the, the carving and the lining of the box、All、and、right. give, me, give me a roll for that? I think that I can argue sleight of hand for this as well because it is intricate handwork. I would agree with that one. I would like to specify that I'm not going for realism necessarily, I'm going for like an artsy, simple, Wood carving, what it's like, you know what it is by looking at it, and it's simple and elegant. 22. Okay, you do exactly as you said, and exactly as you said it. And、so. if time permits, because it is ivory, I will take a thin brush and kind of put gold so that it. In the little etchings, so that the picture is even more clear. Yeah, I say with the 22, you absolutely can.、Right. And you create a stunning design. This is looking incredible. And now it comes down to Kit and his dice work.、Uh, and Kit actually rolls really well as he surprisingly,、um, you guys don't have a lot of time, so he uses this kind of like rapid setting silicone like molding. So the dice themselves are not necessarily ideal for a game, they're kind of bouncy. Um, but he creates these really nice、uh, dice with this like white lilac swirl inside.、Um, he barely, barely manages to ink it. The inking is probably where you see like the least detail there. But he does manage to get them nice and polished as he is working. You see his eyes splitting like the meme of SpongeBob reading two different books <laughs>、um, as he is focusing on like the seven different shaped die、uh, at different times as he's polishing, inking, carving.、Uh, Uh, setting and、uh, but he gets it all done, and you guys present it. Trip comes up, holds their hand out for you to place the, the dice box in. I do so. Okay, they open it. You hear the little pop of the magnet, the sliding of the ivory. It's very pleasing. The,、uh, the soft touch, they run their hands along it. You see Richard is looking over the edge, as is Jessica.、Uh, Trip takes the D20, holds it in their hand, observes it, places it back. Uh, and then it gives it back to you, goes and whispers into Richard's ear. Very impressive work. Should you be hired, we believe that、uh, this prop could even be stage ready as is. So,、um, good work, everyone. I believe we have seen everything we need to see from you today. All right. We、perfect. can omit the final challenge,、uh, as we believe we have gotten a good sense for your craftsmanship. Expect us to be in contact one way or another.、Uh, he looks at Trip. Trip is like staring at him very innocently, but he sweats. <laughs>、uh, soon. Very soon. 
thank you very much for your time. Thank you okay. for applying. It's a pleasure to have you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. on, son. Is he going to be okay? I'm so sorry, sir. I'm afraid your son is only halfway there. Oh, God. What happened? He was found on the side of the road, half alive. I should have been there. I should have been there for my boy. Was he alone? He was found with only a cage with hamsters inside. This cage. Is that scruffles? <laughs> hey, little buddy. How are you? And, oh, oh my god. Is that a little scruff ass? <laughs> oh my god, and little scrufflets. Mr. Daddy G, sir. I'm afraid that Nicky B may remain in this coma forever. In similar cases, only about half the patients ever wake up. There has to be something we can do. Making it here, safe and sound, was half the battle. The rest is up to him. God. Was there any indication what he was up to? What, 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 what might have caused this? Any additional clues? He was found with a smartphone in hand, opened to patreon.com slash drimbus, where listeners of the hit actual play podcast Dungeons and Drimbus can access exclusive bonus content, special merch, the chance to have NPCs named after them, and even the ability to play in one shots with the cast of Dungeons and Drimbus. Nicky sure did love his Drimbus. He, he used to do a little radio show every week. I think he called it a an ad time, something like that. I don't know what I'm going to do without him. Don't lose hope, sir. We have to believe there's a chance he wakes up. He may not be all the way here right now, but there's half a chance that he will be. You're right. Nicky never gave up on anything. It would be a disservice to him to lose hope now. I'll give you two some time alone. Oh, son. What are we going to do? You always drove me half crazy, but this exceeds my worst fears by half. But you have to pull through. You hear me? You have to. If I were to lose you, I wouldn't be even half the man I am now. You're going to be okay. I'm going to make sure you are. Because you have to be. Huh? Scruffles, uh, how'd you get out of your cage? Oh. See, it's unlocked. Anyways, what? What's this? Now, this is names. Who are these people? Queso Loco, Jerry Benetatos, Victoria Madrid, Greta Beignet, Alex Gapes My Ass. What? Ace Andrews, Regina Russell, Sam Olivos, Jordan Cobb, The Unnamed Rogue, NB Star, Doubtful Guest, Michael Richters, Davis Walden, Denny Dewdrop, Myth Mouse, Callie Wolf, Brandon M. Bishop. Bridge, Twiglets, Joanna, Stan Sitzman, Scrambles, The Death Dealer, Aaron Adams, Nathan Mesner, Ruth Anardos, Carrie Holmes, Stoner Panda, Melissa Rain, Hensational, uh, Butts of Plenty, Uvular Nutria, Normally Me, Dane Kohlhoff, Loon, Faust, The Heavenly Demonic Monster, Mosh Coffee, Official Anarchy, David Carlton, and Lord Braxton Von Wendell III. These are Nikki's friends! Where do I know them from? Um, they, they must have been a part of that club, that, that patreon.com slash Drimbus, right? Ni Nikki always told me it was some exclusive club, and, and they chatted on a, on a Discord or, or something. I don't... Scruffles, what are you trying to tell me?
Meanwhile, upstairs, the rehearsal comes to a close. Tyronicus and Thomas, please give me performance checks. 14. 17. Okay. At the end of rehearsal, Ryan comes up to you again, uh, Thomas, mm -hmm. and says, Oh, good work today, Mr. Phelps. You remind me of when I first started acting in primary school. A lot of potential, to be sure. Oof. Uh, it's part of the process, Ryan. It all comes yes, together. Yes, it's a compliment. Yet. Right, right. Um, can I go? Do you have anything else to say to me? or? Uh, no. H have a nice day. And he struts away. Mm -hmm. Nacho comes up to you after you saw he was having a chat with Tommy Were and he says, I don't think I'm doing a really good job, Thomas. What? What do you mean? I don't know. I just, I'm having a hard time, like, staying genuine, even, like, since I already know what happens in the script, you know? That Nacho, what is this, like, the first rehearsal, second rehearsal? I know, but Tommy already, like, he asked me if I was feeling okay, and it has me worried. You'll be fine. Just keep working at it, Nacho. You know, stay present, stay in the moment. You'll get there. All right. I guess tomorrow's a new day, huh? Exactly. Don't even think about it. Okay. And as you guys head out of the theater on your way out of rehearsal, you bump into the rest of the crew. Hey, how'd it go? Whoa, don't bump into me. <laughs> I, I'm oh sorry, I, did this. I, I think, I mean, well, we were, you guys were just coming out, so it was more you bumping into me, Thomas, but, you know, let's not split hairs about this. Uh, hi, did rehearsal go well? Sorry, I was overseeing, um, well, not overseeing, I was a part of the... I think we got some new uh, costume designer, prop designer, and set designer. Fingers Don't crossed. Don't say it too, too soon in case, you know. Well, I did just speak with Trip, and they would like to move forward <gasps> with all of you. That's wonderful. Nice. Congratulations, all. We should go celebrate. I, I agree. We should really, I think we well, deserve it. Well, maybe we should wait until we have a paycheck. And then we can go celebrate. You know what? Oh, yes, I like that, that was one. also ooh, that one. part of my responsibility. And Richard holds up like a big bag of gold coins. He says, I was supposed to do payroll today and I forgot. <gasps> so you all get your first paychecks. Here you go. And he hands each of you 15 gold. Heck yes. Nice. Thank you, Richard. You're very welcome. I suppose I will have to pay the rest of the crew tomorrow. Can you catch anybody as they're leaving now? Let me see. Wait! And he runs out, <laughs> waving uh, his bag of coins. Go do that. Well done. And how did rehearsal go today, fellas? I think it went rather well. Not not bad. Nacho's a little down on himself, but it was pretty good. Oh, Nacho, yes. don't you feel bad about anything? It's only day two. I, th I think I just need to do a little more character study, you know? I understand. I'm afraid I'm making a kind of one note. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm sure you're a really nice person and all uh, from everything that I saw from Thomas. But I just feel like I'm missing something, you know? Like, I don't understand how this person becomes a murderer. <laughs> That's kind of a good place to be, though, isn't it? Because if you knew from the beginning that that is the action you would take, then, then in the scenes before the act, the audience would know that that's what's going to happen, wouldn't it? I guess, yeah. Hmm. There is some mystery. He's, he pulls out a cigarette. <laughs> I'll think on it. You guys celebrate that night with your 15 gold. You come home. Um, Gary has actually just uh, started working on a margarita mix at Richard's <gasps> behest. Wow. And so you all enjoy some margaritas. He makes some fantasy fajitas. <gasps> um, and you all enjoy a lovely dinner. You rest for the night. And that morning, Monique and Cheerio uh, head out to Secura City to see if they can secure some jobs as uh, security guards and hopefully get assigned to the theater when the time comes. Meanwhile, that day at the Autograph Theater, um, Viper, Barb, and Kit, you guys begin work in the workshop as you have been asked to draft up kind of your plans for the show and set in a budget. So you guys begin working on that. And in the actual rehearsal, we see Thomas and Tyronicus in the middle of a scene. Tommy interrupts. No, 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 no. Tommy guy, do you want this? I, yes, I want this. I don't believe. Do I should just put Mr. Ryan guy in here instead? Absolutely not. Um, okay, um, well then prove it, man. Okay, okay. He grabs you. He, he shakes you. He says, here. 
Mr. Applecrab, come here. <laughs> you know lines? I do indeed. Okay, Tiro, keep going. Tommy, Ryan, you both read same time, okay? I see who I like more. <gasps> oh, I see. So, Tyronicus, you are going to read Berg. Ryan and Thomas are going to be reading James at the same time. Um, Thomas, please give me a performance roll. Okay. Uh, that's a 17. And Tyronicus, go ahead and give me a performance roll while you're at it, too. 18. Take us away, Tyronicus. <laughs> and what's this? It's, it's a painting, painting dad. dad. What are you, a woman? Men, Men can paint, paint too, dad. Too, da <gasps> Why are you wasting your time on this shit? I'm not wasting, wasting my, my time. time. I... I... Oh. Why? Daddy, why? Daddy. Grow the fuck up, Jimmy. <laughs> I, I love you. I love you. Daddy. Daddy. I, I love you. I love I you. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this does not work with the slap, trying to slap both of you at the same time. It was a little weird. Here you go. Uh, give me, go to monologue in scene four, thank you. Um, it's pretty close. I don't, I don't make up my mind just yet, so here we go. <laughs> oh my god, oh my uh, god. Please give me another performance roll. Are we going at the same time again? Yes, you are. Oh my god. <laughs> Ooh, okay, that was an 18. Okay. I'm gonna use Ben Luck and spend two sorcery points to roll a d4 and get Thomas yes. up on Okay. To Heck yeah. And you get one, so you get 19. Before they go, can Jessica, like, pop up there and go, okay, actually, just before you uh, go, I, I just wanted to give a little something. All right, so Jessica's going to go over to Thomas, um, lean in, and whisper in Thomas's ear, okay, this is a very, it's a pivotal moment in, in the show. He's lost everything. And and James, um, he he's not sure how he's going to continue on in this moment. But but you know how that feels, Thomas. It's happened twice in your life. Once when you lost your family, and then the second time when when you lost your assistance. Okay, so don't necessarily think about that fully, but but f pull from that where you were at. Put, take yourself back to that moment, those moments. Okay? And and then we're going to give this a shot. Okay? Okay. Okay. Thomas, I'm going to say that gives you advantage on the roll. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know if I could beat the last roll. Oh, I did. 19. So, plus one. Plus, Tyronicus's Ben Luck brings you to... Nah, dirty 20. Okay. Um, and Ryan goes, and what about me, assistant director? Uh, well... We, we're we're looking to work. I think uh, what Tommy's trying to do here is he's trying to really like push Thomas here to be the best that he can be. Um, so, but, but I'll, I'll come over and and Jessica comes over and she goes, okay. So um, so this is a pivotal scene for James. Um, and and you just have to remember that. He's like extremely happy. This is the happiest he's ever been in his life. Um, <laughs> this this is bringing him so much joy. So I, that that is hard to discern from the text, but you know all about subtext. So so really yeah, try to yeah. bring that joyful subtext out of this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Give me a deception check. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now he has disadvantage. Come on, dice. Come on, dice. Come on, dice. Come on. Oh, <laughs> It's a natural 20, baby. Oh, my God. Plus four, <laughs> bringing it to a 24. But the natural 20 is more important. Thank you, <laughs> Assistant Director. If I may, Tommy, I really believe this to be the pivotal moment in the show. And I think it deserves to be treated with respect. To have us talking over each other would do no one any good. Please, I believe if you were to listen to what I can do with this monologue, it would change your mind. Okay, you're being really weird, but yeah, sure. Do you want to go first? Um, y yes, I would. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> he shoves you out of the way, Thomas. Okay. Daddy! Oh, dear 
Daddy! Oh, how am I supposed to let you go? You're gone and I can still feel your presence. Your penetrating gaze, ooh, the stench of krill. The sting of your palm on my cheek, oh, dearest Daddy. You've bruised me, not just my flesh. My soul. How does the soul heal? Ooh, can an invisible wound ever close? Or do we bleed into the ether forever? Oh, you stole pieces of me with every fist. And now your fists have gone. But so are the pieces. <gasps> to the sea. To rest. Who am I? Who am I without you? Am I free to do what I always wanted? <gasps> yes, methinks. Mm, or have I just lost the excuse I hide behind? Yes, me also thinks. My body is here, but my spirit is free. See, that's, that's subtext, Tommy. It's not lost, it's free. My spirit is free. You've taken it with you to see, Daddy. And he takes a bow. Jessica gives... A polite applause, and she is smiling and just kind of. She's been nodding along the whole time, and she's like, oh, "Excellent." As a note, Ryan rolled a three on this. Oh <laughs> my god! So now, Thomas, I want you to give me your best attempt at pretty much as good as this monologue can get. Oh boy! Um, I want you to draw on those notes that Jessica gave you. Yes. Before Thomas starts. Well, he can't really wink, but he kind of leans one of his eye sockets towards Jessica. <laughs> the eye socket <laughs> creaks like slightly shut. <laughs> All right, here I go. Daddy. Oh, dear daddy, how am I supposed to let you go? You're gone and I could still feel your presence, your penetrating gaze, the stench of krill, the sting of your palm on my cheek, dearest daddy. You've bruised me. Not just my flesh, but my soul. How does a soul heal? Can an invisible wound ever close, or do we bleed into the ether forever? You stole pieces of me with every fist, and now your fists have gone, but so are the pieces. To the sea. To rest. Who am I? Am I, without you, am I free to do what I always wanted, or have I just lost the excuse I hide behind? My body is here, but my spirit is lost. You've taken it with you. To see. Daddy. Jessica's applauding, and you, you see, like, her eyes welling up. And she uh, stands up and goes, excuse me, I just, I just have to step outside for a moment. And uh, she exits the rehearsal room to kind of try to pull herself together. You see, that is what I'm talking about. You just need a little competition to bring it out of you. You are getting too complacent because you get job. And also, you, Mr. Apple Crab, who the fuck are you? You are supposed to be backup reliability? What was that? You, <laughs> why, what are you doing on this stage? That is maybe the worst Mickey Mouse shit I ever seen in my life. You are not reliable backup. Yeah. Get out of here. Go, be gone. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Director. Be gone. Get out, you fire. Oh, my God. Don't make me take my gold back. Go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and he runs out of the rehearsal room. Thomas looks like one of the characters from the new horror movie, Smile. <laughs> <laughs> well, by the time this episode comes out, the 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 new old classic <laughs> <laughs> but as he runs out of the room uh jessica re-enters um and you see that she dabbed at her eyes a bit um and she she watches as he runs out of the room and goes oh my goodness what just did i miss something you know i never thought i'd say this but i couldn't have done it without him or you jessica for that matter oh thanks yeah you're welcome anytime that's what I'm here for, the assistant director. I thought the little bit of singing he added was a nice touch. Have you ever considered writing a musical? I did like that. I do want to talk about that with, you know, to see if we could do musical adaptation. Well, I'm sure that uh, Jessica, wherever she is, she'd be very interested in uh, having a whole expanded universe of plays. 
and EB even musicals as well. Okay, everybody. So I think with that, that is a good place to stop because that is important monologue. Um, Mr. Thomas Guy, good job. I'm very proud of you. You do big improvement today. Uh, Tyronicus, like always, I like the way you roll. You do good job. Very nice. Your slap, very convincing. Ah, I like the <laughs> I like way the he rolls. rolls. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, everybody doing good job. Um, I just, everybody, I got one more announcement before you go, okay? Like I said, yes, you are all doing a great job. But I do have a special announcement. Uh, I talked with Bart today, and uh, we will be having a special VIP preview show in one week, okay? On the 21st of winter. It's big excitement. So be ready to do the good hard work for the next week, okay? Mwah! Love it! Ooh. And he walks out of the room. <laughs> and with that, you wrap up today's rehearsal. You all regroup. Those of you downstairs in the basement, you've been working with Richard throughout the day, uh, solidifying some of your plans to submit to Trip uh, before you guys actually get started on the construction. You guys regroup. Okay, uh, 21st of winter, we got a preview going on. Um, right. Exciting. Right. Wow. For VIPs. Uh, so that sounds uh, so- sounds promising that to sounds, get some yeah. certain special individuals mm-hmm. to Indeed. the performance. Um, Thomas, I did have a question. Do you know if they're going with the skin suit? Because that might change the colors that I utilize to like fully express you because if you're if you're as is which i think is is a good touch then you know i'll choose colors that complement your uh, bone marrow i you know i i haven't really thought about that as is i suppose all right great thank you just need to know for next week i, mean, I would ask a- jessica i mean they, they wrote the play she wrote the play so i mean i might as well right i'll ask victoria uh <laughs> what what she thinks as the assistant director um do you has has Tommy mentioned a skin suit, or do you think we're going? I think Tommy is, uh, he he has a very expressionistic style um, in his direction, so I don't think we need to take things quite so literally. Um, I think he, he, um, if I could sum up what he does in the rehearsal room in, in one key phrase, I would say, trust the text. Brilliant. All right, Brilliant. perfect. So in that case, then I think I have the colors that that will be best in my brain then. Okay. Shall we to home? To home. We shall to home. To home away. Very well. You guys to home. And upon arriving at home, you see Monique and Cheerio, like leaning outside the front of the storefront. They are covered in blood. And just staring ahead with hollow eyes. Ah. Uh, what happened? (laughs) <laughs> Hi. They just kind of ignore you, and then Monique says, We got the job. And walks inside and straight to the bathroom to wash themselves off. Uh, uh congrats. What happened? I have no idea. Um, all right. Well, I, I guess good thing they got the job, but uh, perhaps the job interview came with some trauma. Uh, but at what cost? I wonder at what cost. Right. And with those lingering questions in your head, you settle in for dinner as uh, Gary has been trying out a ton of new recipes. And today he brings out a roast duck. And you sit down and you enjoy. uh, And he gets deep into the story. He goes, okay, so so wait, so Bob, tell me about this. So this Jerry guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So after he molted. Yeah. Then where was it that he went? He, he just started walking. He just started walking and he wouldn't stop. And he would not stop for nothing. For no, I promise you, I tried to talk him out of it so many times. I literally had to check in on him every now and again. I had to take flights to meet him and certain... He literally just would not stop walking. Can you believe that? Huh. Wow. It's the weirdest... He I, I, is... Did, did, did you I, ever see where he did stop? Ah. Uh, well, I mean, technically I did see him recently. So I guess, I mean, he stopped at some point. I don't know exactly what the stopping point was, though. You know yeah, what I mean? right. And then at this point, you hear the bathroom door open and Monique walks out and back into the dining room and you see her brow is furrowed and her eyes are focused as she stares at the eye mail. Um, uh, hey, Monique, right? you, you good? You good over there? She holds up the eye mail 
and you see a message scribbled on it. And she says, it's him. I'm, I'm sorry? Mm. It's who? It's Gary. Huh? What? What? This has been Your Honor. Your Honor features the vocal talents of T.J. Berry as Tyronicus, Amanda Fernandez Acosta as Barbara, Nicholas Palazzo as Thomas Phelps, Michael Pisani as Jessica Felcher, and Hannah Schooner as Viper. The rest of the world is voiced by your DM, Giancarlo Herrera. Editing was done by Hannah Schooner and Giancarlo Herrera with sound design by Giancarlo Herrera. If you want to support the show, consider checking out the links in the show notes or go to patreon.com slash drimps. Our patrons get access to exclusive perks like our After the Show show, After the Drimbus, free exclusive merch, bonus series, and the chance to create items for the show or have NPCs named after you. Oh! And don't forget to tweet using hashtag Drimbus to be entered to win a free Dungeons and Drimbus sticker. Thank you all so much for listening, and I do declare, I'll see you all next week.